Hey guys, welcome to another Escape from Tarkov Science video. This time I'm attempting to provide an objective answer to the question I get very often on stream, which is what is the difference between the different active headsets in the game? Some of you newer players might be asking what the fuck is an active headset? So the game describes them as headsets that amplify low level sounds while suppressing impulse noises. What does that mean? You're in the right place. So I'm going to be comparing the use of no headset to the three primary headsets in the game, the Peltor Compact 2, the GSSH-01, and the MSA Sordon Supreme Pro XL, or Sordons for short. Note that I omitted the OpsCore Fast Rack headset from the test, as I established early on in the first few tests I did that they seem to be completely indistinguishable from the Sordons, so at any point in this test when I'm talking about the Sordons, you can assume the same applies to the OpsCore. Like most things in this game, everyone has their own opinion about which headset is the best, but in reality everybody relies on their own subjective experiences here. As far as I know, nobody has done any sort of objective comparison, analysis, or measurements to compare these different headsets. So the goal of this video is to do just that. It's not to tell you which is better per se, as that depends on your personal preference or what your goal is when wearing active headsets. The goal of this video is to give the community actual quantitative data for exactly how and why the headsets differ from each other and compared to wearing no headset at all. First, in order to make sense of the data I've collected here, I need to give you a super quick lesson in acoustics because most of the people don't know this shit, and if you don't understand the basics here, none of it will be significant. Now, we don't have all fucking day, so I'll give you the TLDR version straight away. Most of the data I'm going to be talking about here is in decibels. Decibels measure sound pressure. Decibels are measured using a logarithmic scale. What's that? You're 13 and don't know what that means? Okay, let me ex Oh, sorry, you said you're 30 and don't know what that means? Fine. Put simply as possible, we use logarithmic scales when the differences in data are so large that trying to visually represent it linearly would be a major pain in the ass. The softest sounds we can hear is something like 20 micropascals, and the launching of the space shuttle is upward of 2 billion micropascals. Trying to represent data on a graph with a y-axis with a range like that would be both untenable and also impractical, as the vast majority of the shit that we hear on a day-to-day -day basis falls into the thousands or tens of thousands of micropascals. What you need to know for the sake of this discussion is that for most people, decibel values aren't exactly intuitive. In order for this to sink in, you need to know two basic pieces of information. Firstly, two decibels is not twice as loud as one decibel. 100 decibels is not 10 times louder than 10. The details don't matter too much. Feel free to do your own homework if you're interested. But what you should know is that the difference in 3 decibels represents twice the sound pressure. If you add 1 decibel to 1 decibel, the resulting sound is actually 4 decibels. Because, in this case, you are doubling the pressure. And as mentioned, 2 times the pressure is 3 decibels. The second piece of information you need to know is there's an important distinction between sound pressure and the perceived loudness of a sound to the human ear. The commonly accepted idea is that 10 decibels represents a sound that is about twice as loud to the human ear. Alright, so with that in mind, let's jump into the data. Each of the tests was conducted in the same way. I replicated the same sound first while not wearing active headphones, then tried each of the different headphones in the same order each time. Peltor, GSSH, Sordens. All of the audio was captured, split, categorized, and then run through frequency and amplitude analysis tools. Finally, all the raw data for each test was captured and represented visually. The first test is a comparison of the outdoor ambient soundscape for a normal daytime good weather map. The most notable subjective thing I noticed right off the bat here is how much the headphones reduce the sound of the wind. That seemed to me to be the most drastic difference. The sound of the birds chirping in the background didn't seem to be quite as drastic. Starting with the baseline without headphones and then putting on the contacts, we immediately saw about a 5 decibel reduction in the ambient sound. Now I want to stress any time I mention changes in the decibel levels, keep in mind that little heuristic I mentioned earlier about 10 decibels being approximately twice the perceived psychoacoustic loudness. Conversely, if a sound is reduced by 10 decibels, it will seem approximately half as loud as before. With that in mind, the differences in the values should stand out as much more significant than they might have initially appeared to you if you didn't know that this stuff was logarithmic. 
Looking at the frequency data, it doesn't appear that the ambient sound has any significant differences in equalization between the different headphones. The next test is the same as the first, but instead compares ambient soundscape indoors. This test had similar results in that there was a noticeable volume difference between wearing no headphones and wearing headphones, but there was no perceptible difference between the different headphones in my opinion. And again, it appears there's no significant alteration to the EQ between the different headphones. The next test touches upon a contentious subject in the EFT community, the amount and volume of rain. Without headphones, the rain's quite loud, and even with headphones, it can get uncomfortable over long periods of time and even in the way of normal speaking levels for streamers. The various headphones do reduce the volume of the rain, but not as much as I would personally like. And again, here we see that there's no major differences in the EQ between the different setups. Continuing the pattern, rain indoors is very similar to what we've seen thus far. One notable thing here is that this is the first time we've seen what appears to be a slightly disproportional dip in the low-end EQ when wearing headphones compared to not. Now here we start to get into the more interesting stuff, how the sound of your own running is affected with the different options. Now these are the first set of sounds that are amplified by the headphones rather than reduced, and it also seems like the differences between each are more noticeable. Looking at the frequency analysis, we can clearly see a boost to the low and mid-range frequencies when wearing Sordans, whereas the other two headsets actually reduce the low-end EQ, but then end up being fairly similar in the mid to high ranges. Now I know some people dislike the thumpiness of the Sordans, but I actually prefer the added bass as it seems a bit more balanced compared to the other headsets that only boost the mids and highs, but again this is subjective. If you have different headphones or different audio setup or different preferences, your mileage may vary. Another problematic sonic experience for many people involves bushes or trees. Walking through the woods is only mildly annoying without headphones, but for many can be downright uncomfortable when wearing them. Now looking at the EQ, we can see that all three headsets actually reduce the low end on the foliage noise, but again, Sordans are bassier than the rest, and then as we move towards the higher EQs, the Peltors take over and are louder on the mids and highs than the rest. It's also interesting here that the Sordans, which up to this point have generally been the ones to reduce or amplify sounds the most of the three, actually do the opposite. It'll be interesting to see if this pattern is broken during any of the other tests. Another player-generated sound, jumping, can be useful to gain tactical information on an enemy, but can also be distracting for yourself if too loud compared to your surroundings. So let's see how they compare. Again, the Sordans are the bassier of the three, and are interestingly enough the only headphones to amplify your own footsteps on the lower end above the level of no headphones at all, but the other two pick up the slack as usual towards the mid and high ranges. So many surfaces in Tarkov sound as if they're made of corrugated steel fencing and can be pretty shitty to run long distances on. 
So let's see how running on the metal surfaces stacks up. Now the results here were pretty interesting to me. Other than a portion in the lower to mid range, the Sordans were the only headsets that actually seemed close in volume to no headphones at all, and the other two seemingly noticeably more loud and tinny, and in my opinion, annoying. Now arguably the most important reason for wearing active headphones in EFT is to amplify the footsteps of nearby enemies, giving you a massive tactical advantage in a fight. The results in these next few tests were very interesting. The first thing worth mentioning here is that the ambient noise in factory without headphones was actually louder than any of the other combinations in this test, so it actually made the numbers in this case misleading, so it ultimately chose not to graph them. I couldn't figure out how to isolate the volume of the footsteps here to measure and compare only the steps, but sharing this footage is still interesting nonetheless. We can clearly see that as the other player turns the corner into a different room and walks towards breach room, they rapidly become unheard without headphones. Now compared to the same when wearing the other headphones, the ambient noise was reduced and the footsteps amplified just enough that you could hear the footsteps almost all the way to the breach door. The next test shows the sounds of another player's footsteps as they run away from you outdoors to see if there's a significant difference to drop off in sound. After something like 25 steps, the player could no longer be heard when not wearing headphones. Now with all three sets of headphones, the footsteps were pretty clearly audible out past about 40 steps. Now I can't say for sure right now if any of the headphones are better over longer distances, but it seems that Sordans and Comtacks are indeed louder than the GSSHs. Now in the future I'll have to do some more testing and we'll need to find a better way to measure sound drop off over distances reliably. We just keep getting killed and ambushed during these tests so I sort of gave up after a while. Now here we're going to be testing the first set of impulse noises. We'll be testing gunshots by our own PMC outside. There was a noticeable difference in sound between no headphones and wearing headphones. Switching between the Peltors and GSSHs didn't seem very significant, but then when switching to the Sordans again it made a noticeable change. This was actually the most significant reduction in sound yet, with the Sordans seemingly at half the perceived loudness as without headphones. Now looking at the EQ again, we see the same sort of pattern hold for where Sordans are higher on the bass, but towards the mid to high range they are lower than the other headphone options, and obviously wearing no headphones at all boosts the overall EQ pretty much equally. Continuing this pattern, I repeated the same test shooting indoors and the results were very similar, although even more pronounced.
Now, the next few tests were intended to see if there was a significant difference in the left and right channels when impulse noises such as gunshots were heard at a distance. Now, the goal of this was to see if perhaps directional audio was more pronounced with any of the headsets. Now, I didn't end up making graphs for this test, but all you need to know here is that I found no significant differences between any of the headsets when comparing the volume differences of the left and right channels when testing directional audio. More testing on this is probably needed in the future. So the next test of impulse noises was the explosion from a fragmentation grenade outdoors. Similar to the results from the gunshot tests, the Sordans reduced the perceived volume from explosions the most while maintaining more of the lower end and cutting out the mid and higher end frequencies. The final impulse noise test was done using flashbangs. One notable thing here was the pronounced ringing effect that was experienced when flashbanged without ear protection that lasted quite a while and was pretty annoying and how this was completely avoided by using any of the headphones. Now the Comtax and GSSHs provided a decent reduction in sound from the flash, although again the Sordans provided a more significant reduction. We also see the same sort of EQ results as previous tests. Now the next test was attempting to measure any noticeable differences that might exist between sounds when heard directly in front of you versus directly behind you at the same distance. It appears to me that there is no discernible difference between the two, so you'll still need to turn your head and use the standard directional audio cues to identify if a sound is directly in front or behind you. So the final test was attempting to measure and compare the differences in volume drop-off as distance from the source increases. Now, interestingly enough, it appears as though the GSSHs had the largest difference in sound reduction between the two distances, and the Sordans had the smallest. Now, both of these could be said to be advantageous depending on your perspective. On one hand, having a more drastic volume gradient between two distances can in fact make it easier to estimate how far away someone is, assuming that you've trained your ear to be familiar with this gradient. On the other hand, the fact that there's less of a reduction in sound means that the sound is louder, so it will be easier to actually notice and be able to react to distant sounds that might be approaching. So I also ended up doing a bunch more tests comparing all sorts of things like hearing an enemy looting filing cabinets nearby, reloading their guns, jumping off in the distance, running through bushes, but these results didn't differ in any way from the previous tests I did before, so to keep this video a reasonable length, I'm leaving these out. Alright, so to summarize, here are the major takeaways from these tests. There seem to be three categories of noises in this game. Ambient noises, impulse noises, and player noises. Headphones reduce the volume of ambient noises and impulse noises and amplify player noises when compared to wearing no headphones at all. Whether the end result is a reduction or amplification of sounds, the Sordans tended to have the most dramatic effect, followed by the GSSHs and then the Peltors. There were measurable differences in the equalization of the different headsets as well, with the Sordans being heavier on the bass, and the Comtex being heavier on the mid and trebles, with the GSSHs somewhere in between. Each of these options are viable and provide advantages to your gameplay in different situations, so at the end of the day it simply comes down to your personal preference. There are objective differences between each of the active headsets as I've shown here, but what will be best for you is completely subjective, so you'll want to keep this data in mind when choosing the headset that you'll be taking out into raids with you. So after all this testing, hours and hours of gathering and analyzing the data and putting it into a form consumable by all you guys, uh, I still have about a thousand more tests I'd love to do and a million more questions I'd like to have answered. Now I didn't get to touch on all the things I wanted to here due to time constraints, so maybe I'll come back to this again in the future. But if you guys appreciate the amount of time and effort I put into this, please like the video, sub to the channel, and let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Now I'd also love it if you guys came by my Twitch stream sometime. I'm live almost every day, um, weekdays around 6 p.m. and weekends starting around 10. Good luck out there in your raids, guys. See you later.